Local 3 Sports with Jake Duran. The high school football playoffs kicked off tonight. 15 UP teams taking part in the Survive and Advance tournament. Our game of the week featured two of the best player or two of the best teams in the eight player league, Norway hosting Newberry. The winner will live to play another game while another team's season will come to an end. Let's go to Norway for our game of the week between the Knights and Newberry. First quarter, no score. Newberry quarterback Gavin Nutkins going to keep it, breaks a tackle, and he gets things started with a score to put Newberry up 8-0 after the successful two-point try. Norway looking for a touchdown of their own, and they're going to get it. Cole Baj will drop it in perfectly to Alex Ortman. It's 8-6 Newberry. Those two were just getting started. Baj going to go deep again, and Ortman's going to be left all alone. I'm guessing a blown coverage there leading to a night score. It's 14-8 Norway. But wait, there's more. Baish, to guess who? It's Ortman again. He was unguardable early in this one. Another big passing play will lead to a Knights touchdown. It is 22-8 Norway. Newberry looking to stay within striking distance, and this will definitely help. Matthew Rahilly going to break through a couple of tackles. He rumbles down the field, and no one's going to catch him. It's 22-14 Knights. And then with the first half winding down, Baij going to find his favorite target. It's Ortman once again, Norway. They want to win a high-scoring affair, 56 to 48. It was, it was a, an intense game, uh, you know, exciting game for the fans to watch. You know, things that I didn't like to see out of our kids, things that you know I'm sure the coach didn't like to see. You know, it was, it was a physical game, really physical game, a lot of points on the board. So it was a fun game to be at. The Knights will take on the Pickford Panthers in the regional finals. The Panthers took care of Rudyard tonight, 38 to 16, to advance to play Norway. We go now to Iron Mountain. The Mountaineers ended the regular season 9-0, and they were focused tonight against Maple City Glen Lake. Early in the game, were scoreless. Luke Wolf with the nice field vision here on the carry, and there he goes. He's going to put Iron Mountain up 7-0. A bit later, first and 10 from the Maple City Glen Lake 19-yard line, and Wolf will get his number called once again, and he's going to score a second touchdown of the night, weaving his way through the defense. It's 14 nothing Mountaineers. Iron Mountain just getting started. This time it's Alex Jane toting the rock. He's a big time playmaker for the Mountaineers, and he shows it here. 21 nothing Iron Mountain. The Mountaineers defense making a play later on. Braden Wallstrom going to come flying in off the edge. He not only creates the fumble, but also scoops the ball up and scores it. Mountaineers are rolling. This one was all all Iron Mountain 57 to 6. They go on to win the game. Here is head coach Robin Martela after the game. Well, we got the turnovers in that first quarter, and it sort of snow, snowballed from there. Give our kids credit. They played hard. Uh, they made plays, right? And playoff football is all about making plays. And we had a couple, you know, interceptions there, a couple of pick sixes. So we were able to, uh, you know, slow down their no huddle offense early, and we just got the job done. So credit to our all kids, credit to the Mountaineers. Uh, we got it done tonight. The Mountaineers will play the winner of tomorrow's district semifinal between East Jordan and Ishpeming. That one is set up set to kick off at East Jordan at 2 p.m. Eastern. Let's head now to Marquette. Marquette hosting Petoskey, a rematch between the teams. They met back in week seven with Marquette edging the Northmen 21 to 20. Petoskey's first drive of the game, third and nine deep in Marquette territory. Dason Smith will tackle the ball carrier for a three yard loss. Petoskey would turn the ball over on downs to keep us scoreless. Second quarter, no score. Petoskey with the ball. Joseph McCarthy unleashes one deep to Seth Merrick. Petoskey's biggest deep threat makes a grab at seven nothing Petoskey. Marquette looking to answer. Ford Richardson hands it off to Tucker Welsh. He finds a lane. He breaks off a big run. Welsh was Marquette's offense in the first half. He had 18 carries over 130 yards in this touchdown here, which is going to tie the game up at seven. With seconds remaining in the first half, Petoskey in the red zone. McCarthy connects with Lucas O'Donnell. That's a five-yard pass and catch. Petoskey goes into the half up 13-7. The second half was all Petoskey. McCarthy again finding success through the air. This time it's Mitch Eberhart making the catch, setting up the Northmen for another score, which happened a few plays later. Brendan Swift gonna, Swiss going to power it in for the touchdown. Marquette's season comes to a close after falling to Petoskey 26-7. 
Let's head to Irontown, Nagani, starting what they hope is another long playoff run, hosting Grayling tonight. The Miners' defense causing chaos early in the game. Ian Ingstrom, right place, right time. He's going to get the pick off a tipped ball. Nagani is in business. Not too long after that, Kai Lakar going to take the handoff and. He's got nothing but space ahead of him. Lacar going to hit them with the slight primetime high step as he gets into the end zone for our first score of the game. 6-0 minor. Second quarter, Nagani trailing 7-6. They continue to pound the rock. This time it's James Thompson. He's turned into a nice compliment in to Lacar in Nagani's backfield. He gets into the end zone to make it 12-7 minors. Staying in the second quarter, still 12-7 minors. Nagani's Ty Jacobson with a dime to Ingstrom, who makes a tremendous catch, spins, and he's across the goal line for the score. It's 27 minors with just over five minutes to go in the half. Grayling now trailing Nagani 20 to 14. Jacobson to a wide open Matthew Peters. Another big play for the minors to go up two scores. When it's all said and done, Nagani, they advance with a 47 34 win over Grayling. You know, good win. Um, you know, probably these guys for a win we got it. We're still chasing our best game. Uh, we haven't played that perfect game yet. We're going to be in search of it, but um, you know, it's a good win. We, we live to play another week. Nagani's next opponent, the winner of tonight's district semifinal between Gladstone and Boyne City. Let's head to Marble Athletic Field for the game between the Braves and the Ramblers. Braves opening possession, second and eight at the 50. Nate Young going to air it out to Caden Gibbs with the over the shoulder catch. 31 yards into the red zone. First and goal now at the nine. Eli Berthume will get the carry. He's going to give a Rambler defender a pair of broken ankles. The PAT is good. 7-0 Braves. Now in the second quarter, here's Berthume again. This time he's going to take the handoff and go 24 yards to the house. And we got to give a little shout out to Luke Ingram. He was four for four tonight, kicking the PATs. And here he's going to knock this one in to make it 14 nothing Braves. Some more Braves special teams. Gladstone punting and check out this booming kick from Elliot Vitido. 60 yard punt changing field position and the Braves would take advantage advantage after a short Rambler punt just before halftime. Young going to air it out to Casey Allwarden who jumps up and makes the grab. It was 21, 21 nothing Braves at the half. Gladstone goes on to win it 28 to 7. The Braves and Miners will meet in the district finals.